Hello world, Frida Riva Darcy and one Patricia O'Connor here and it is our Friday drop and I am so glad to be here. We have things are blooming, the sky is blue and our flowers, our little yellow flowers are beautiful and our little blue flowers are still busting out and hanging in there. And I just thought this would be a good time uh, as promised, looking at our, uh, I took the cover, that's the cover for our vat of cuttings. And uh, at a glance, you might think that that's about 50% full or 60% full. In reality, uh, had I had three times that many cuttings, uh, I could have gotten them all in there. Um, that's I put those in there knowing that I had space to kill um, everybody's got all kind of room so what we're looking at there is some cuttings from uh, a neighborhood olive tree that does in fact produce olives and uh, three different uh, Japanese maples that are uh, growing in the complex and uh, some uh, coastal redwood uh, tree cuttings that are also growing in the complex. I took those from the drive. The part of a uh, part of the tree uh, overhangs a driveway, our driveway, and parking spaces. So I clipped back some of the stuff that was about to be clipped back because it would have been hanging down too low. Um, so uh, and then the other on uh, this end is some more of those cherry tree cuttings, which look to me to be some sort of uh, silver bark um, cherry tree. They are, that tree produces the most beautiful little flowers. They are kind of a white and then go kind of pink or kind of white slash red uh, overall pink. But they are just really beautiful. So it would be nice to see some of those sprout. Now, uh, kind of what I did there is in the last video, I, I showed uh, how I uh, cut the stems back with a fresh cut. Um, you know, after having soaked them for a little while, I'll make a fresh cut just before I, I stab them into, the, into whatever we're using as a substrate and I uh, also peel back the skin a little bit around around the tip that I cut back at an angle that just gives us more surface area for roots to potentially come out and I usually make that angle cut uh, close to a node because that's where I'm feeling like a lot of the hormonal action tends to be anyway and when it senses a cut there it will um, tend to throw something out from that area to um, to increase its chances. So that's kind of the way that is. Now, had I grown maple trees from cuttings um, a few dozen times, I would probably have an idea about what size is, is best. Had I grown, uh, you know, the same could be said for the olives and the same could be said for the coastal redwoods. So, what I did was, is uh, I experimented. So what you see is some uh, cuttings there look like in those olives. Some of those look really kind of long and gangly, but also there's some that are pretty short in there too. Um, a lot of what I did as far as leaf work on those cuttings was just to peel back or just to prune back um, a lot of leaves at the, making uh, a stem that was a little bit longer and then cleaning back, making a, a large area for that to possibly root. The uh, olives do have a reputation for rooting fairly easily. That's why I went with some thicker cuttings and also went with some longer cuttings. But then um, as a rule, with most other trees, you don't get away with that. So I've got some uh, olive cuttings in there that are more what we would consider to be sensible as well and the same with maples the um, maple cuttings you can see I've with the three different varieties 
Some of them still have part of their leaves. Most of them have at least half of their leaves cut to decrease the uh, to decrease the amount of um, uh, moisture that is lost uh, through the leaves. So that which like once they dry out, that's it. They're gone. So the base is down there in uh, sand. You can kind of still see it in the darker color there. And all of these little cuttings have their feet in that. And we have at least 40% uh, space left over for uh, more and different cuttings. And as we see what works for us, and as we see what uh, failed most and what worked most, we can amend that. We'll know to um, try for longer cuttings on some of these next time around, or we'll know never to try for longer cuttings on some of these. So that's just part of it too. And this will be an on an ongoing process. So not only will will um, I continue to collect things from around the neighborhood to fill up the space that we have here, that 40%, but, uh, and it'll be fun to do that. Uh, not only will I be doing, will I be doing that, but then after that, we'll do another round. Uh, we'll, we'll do it as long as uh, there seems to be something to be gained by. And also, uh, I would say at this point, this this is uh, an experiment. Um, so there is no, as long as we uh, come away with some data, there's no fail to this experiment because we're just here to learn. Yeah, we're just here to learn. We won't be failing as long as we learn. So uh, hopefully we'll get some cool trees out of this, but if we don't, as long as we uh, learn something from the process, then we'll uh, then we'll try it again. And while I'm here, it's just kind of a um, a really nice place to take in how gorgeous these cypress trees are right now. This spot is just uh, already sitting here on this little table, so I could get a good shot at those uh, cuttings just set me right up to sit underneath these cypress trees. And it sure is a nice little spot here. I've got, this is our, this is my little every video check on the new leader. We started growing this shoot this year since this spring. And then we began to cut this one back. And by the fall, when the tree goes that beautiful rusty color, we will cut this and this will take over as the final uh as the final leader to bring this this side of the tree home and it is really pretty the side of those just if i could just get all of that in there that looks it's just kind of a nice place to hang out underneath the cypress trees uh this is going to be since we've gotten there uh I water it and I missed it a little. Our uh, <clears throat> our uh, let's see, our problems here are going to be a couple. One, it's really temperate and cool. The last couple of days have been so uh, really nice, almost fall-like cool. Except that's just kind of what California does. 60s and 70s right now. It's like 72 degrees. Yeah, we could we concur 72 degrees. So uh, I think that uh, if we have any trouble with these cuttings, it might be, I think cuttings would like to be warmer. I might consider getting some uh, heating pads underneath that. A lot of people like to use heating pads underneath their cuttings. And I had thought about that just about the time we started rolling, I was going, well, uh, the temperature went from a high of 80 to uh, a high of almost 70 for the last two or three days since we've started this. So, um, and you can kind of, just to give you an idea of how important that is, if you look at places that are tropical or if you look at places where their daily temps are way up there, you can watch people propagate things that are 
uh, cut from people's yard and thrown on scrap heaps. Uh, you'll see people propagate bougainvilleas uh, in wet sand that are as big around as your arm. I mean, they're just like huge blunt cuttings. Stick them in wet sand and um, in a, put them in a, in a cheap styrofoam cooler with wet sand in the bottom and a piece of plastic over the top so they can sweat it in the heat and watch them root. Here, we have the opposite situation. It's really temperate and cool and the temperature is just almost to die for, but uh, that might not work in our favor when it, when it comes to cuttings. We'll see. Uh, I always had pretty good luck with my perennial type cuttings before, but then I did use uh, heat pads uh, for some of that so yeah we'll see how that works out now from this point on uh, on today's little video we're just going to look and see how everybody's looking uh, this is a good on the level fairly good shot of uh, the backside is that the backside it is that's the backside of uh, Gilligan's Island. No, that is uh, our little maple, Kodaheim maple forest. And so far this year, we're going to roll right into, we're going to roll right into summer without having given anybody uh, a bad case of leaf dieback over, over issues. We've gotten away with it. It was a little bit of dieback here. I just had to clean that. And that is where I was trying to water down in there. And I got water up here on the top. And so the first thing I did was uh, spray it so that if it was wet with anything, it would be wet with something that would uh, get rid of neem and uh, <clears throat> not cause me uh, get rid of powdery mildew and uh, not cause powdery mildew. And I think the result of that was I might've burned that little top, but just that one for some reason. So yeah, this would be the uh, front side of that same, of that same uh, arrangement, uh, Gilligan's Island. As it's, I say that because the way it spread out, it kind of did remind me a little bit of the, um, <clears throat> opening shot on Gilligan's Island, whatever the establishing shot. This is a quick look at um, Hoss, our Ponderosa. And uh, I'm going to get in here nice and tight so you can see how it's just got all these new needles are just extending and coming out and all looking and looking really good. I'm really happy with the development of this tree and it seems to like um <clears throat> it seems to like being fed uh, i've cut back a few of the blooms on the bougainvillea and um it's responded by getting good color back in these leaves it's probably about time to take those blooms off too now i do think i have some okay news to report on the little oak it is growing. I do see more little bumps that could be some uh, shoots that are trying to grow out. But this branch has grown longer. This branch has grown longer. And I don't, and I do see a bud on the very end that's new. So let's see whether or not it's, it's starting to push out stuff and finally starting to uh, look. But I can tell that it has gotten. A little bit bigger and on the topic of here is a quick look at our uh, our little show hen uh, bald cypress after we did the top chop and it is starting to grow quickly and uh, putting out new shoots around the base there so we're starting to get some new limbs and it's just you know it's gonna be nice to see this this guy start filling out and be a tree that's a little bit shorter. I won't allow this top to elongate too much without without uh, cutting it back a little. Um, and then I'm pretty excited about the way my two-year-old going on, I guess, three-year-old 
Japanese, uh, two, three year old from seed, Japanese black pine. I got this the same time that I bought a, uh, a nice tree from uh, Jonas at Bonsai tonight. I said, and also I want to get a starter. So this was probably in his deal. This would have been a less than $20 tree. And it was straight when I got it so that whoever got it could, you know, it was at the staging game where it was just one of many in a flat. And so I brought it home and put a little wire on it and cut it back to some choices so that it would be a show hen size tree. And uh, a couple of nights ago, I um, there's a wire going from one side of this bin to the other side of that bin. And by twisting that, I can squeeze that together, which is what I did. I actually grab it with my thumb and finger and squeeze them together while I'm tightening See if I can show you while I'm tightening that wire that you can see. And uh, that's how I'm increasing the bend in that a little at a time. And that this tree has got so many back buds. Um, uh, Y'all, I am so excited about um, what this little Japanese black pine is doing. As I am my... Uh, my little Ponderosa. I was worried about this one. Um, this was somebody else's started show hen, and it was uh, and it was mine to enjoy or mine to mess up. And so far, it seems to be doing pretty good. While we're talking about pines, um, this was a sweet potato, and uh, then it was. Uh, Sweet pea, uh, after a little bit of refinement. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, now going on about, I think three weeks ago, I took the saw and cut off a part that was every bit this big and went up that way. That was kind of why it was sweet potato. And uh, so now it is simply pea. And I'm really happy with the way it's coming along. I think, uh, I think Simply P is going to be a fantastic little Japanese black pond. This tree came from uh, Brussels. I think it was probably an eight-year-old black pond. And the idea is, is you get a tree that has so many of these little shoots coming out. I could have just as easily called it uh, squid. Or I could have cut all of them off but two and called it crab because it had a, it did this and then it did all the way out to here with another fan of cluster of branches like that. So it was whatever kind of tree you wanted to make out of it. The, uh, those fine folks at Brussels wanted to make sure you had plenty of options and plenty of choices. And the, uh, the uh, pot itself is not, it's not the worst. It's uh, got a high spot. It'll never set level on a level surface without wobbling a little bit. But I don't hate the pot. I think it's fitting. I think the look of the pot is fitting for the tree. And it is just starting to bark up a little. Uh, she says as she peels off a piece of flake and bark. But I am really happy with the way this tree came out. And uh, right now, I would say that we have greatly improved the look of this tree and it is the sum of our choices kind of like I would say about our little two-year-old there I feel um I feel like those two guys are a win now uh when the chips are down you got to keep your head up but this guy this guy worried the heck out of me and that's I think you're uh, probably able to see by now uh our 75 year old cork black pine is uh, coming out of it, coming out of its little deal that we had gone through. And it does have some really, really neat looking thick cork bark on it. And so it's, it really meant a lot to me, not only because it's a 75 year old tree, not only because I'm the third person to have this tree and it would be a shame to be the one that 
that wreck that but um it unto itself it's a really pretty tree and uh, one that i really felt proud to have in my collection so yeah i'm really glad i'm really glad to the way that's turning out when when push comes to shove i think we're going to be okay with that so that brings us to our little 17 year old from seed and it is really happy to be here i'm probably ready to thin out the needles on that guy a little bit maybe tonight there's some uh there's some old needles that i can get rid of thin out a little bit and here for long uh we'll probably be a few weeks away from doing a little bit of uh candle printing on some of these trees but not uh not all of the black pines but on some of them uh not the cork bark i've learned my lesson on that um our cork bark oak is just doing so well that um it's hard for me not to make uh every other video be a cork bark oak video it's just absolutely kicking butt and i finally relented uh it's producing a little shoot right here and we're going to let it for some reason i keep pruning them back over here but in the end we do need a little bit we're going to let all of this fill out and get big and bushy we're going to let all that big and bushy and then we're going to bring bring it up the rear as they say with something over here finally and uh that was just something i just decided um actually i was looking at these cuts i'd made before and going why do you keep cutting those I, don't, I can't remember the history as to why those didn't make but they should because i do have an obvious an obvious spot there we're going to have a big full canopy and stuff so uh, a lot of these i'm thinking that this space will have some light in between it but we'll still have filled in quite a bit this will be full this will be full from here all over to there and, and down a little should all be uh really neat looking and proportionate you know further out once our rim once our ramification two into two into two into two inches its way out there because uh what we do at this point is every time it splits we don't let them grow out very long we cut them back short and let them ramify again and cut them back short and let them ramify again so yeah uh the other ponderosa is uh doing really well uh, i think i've got i think i've got my uh timing down pretty good with its watering it seems to like the level that it gets watered it seems to like being fed uh it uh seems to be a pretty happy tree and i know i'm really really happy to have this guy uh you may notice i have moved these seedlings are not seedlings i have moved these cones uh that i've been having now for about two three months they could do something so what i did was i weeded it and i put it in a part of the uh on the bench that I don't use for the other trees and for a little while anyway they are going to get some direct sun and get heated up I don't know if that'll make any difference but they should have had uh, enough cold time they should have had enough wet time they should have had enough refrigerator time they should have had enough of everything and kiss their little butt time to finally do something so this is the last chance for these guys before we move on to another method of trying to uh of trying to get seeds to sprout on uh coastal redwoods i do feel like i have a fairly endless supply currently of uh cones although the apartment does seem to be a little uh quick on the draw about uh chopping stuff down sometimes i've been hearing the saws a lot lately and we just lost a huge pine i mean they didn't cut it down for a bad reason it was dead as hell but uh I think watering issues is why it was dead as hell. We're having a drought here. And it was a huge pine on the property and it was over a water feature, which actually made it a full grown pine tree that was root over rock. Um, yeah, and when they turn the fountain off, the tree dies because 
it's one ace in the hole was it was root over rocks and the rocks were part of the waterfall. So when the waterfall got turned off in the middle of the drought, the tree died and it was you know, easily, a, it was a really huge pine tree. I don't know. I wouldn't say it was a hundred years old because it looked to me like it had been planted. And uh, so yeah, anyway, that's enough about that. We have been, we have been taking our hits in California as far as the uh, local fauna. So uh, being able to keep our trees happy here is, uh, you know, one thing those guys won't have to worry about. We will, we will give them water and we will give them food and stuff. So yeah, uh, there are other uh, cuttings to be had. I think I mentioned earlier, there are probably a, still a few more uh, maples on the property that uh, I could probably do a little, uh, clip their bangs just a little. Um, looking at that John Redwood. We did get a little bit of burn. That's a combination of uh, me getting the, me getting the needles wet and uh, in this intense lighting, it's it's relatively close to the light in its position. It's a little bit susceptible, and and it's it's a little bit close. I don't think the answer to that is to move it. I think it's the answer to that is to let it adapt. Last year I was going, oh, it's getting a little bit of burn. I'll move it, and I just kept moving it, and that was part of the list of things that I probably did wrong with that guy. So. It, it, like the cypress trees it took a minute to get used to the full spectrum and i should probably just uh give it a minute and let it do that as opposed to uh moving it but it's doing well if you can see it in front of all those behind all those flowers it's branching out really well i would like to see some more choices from the trunk that are this year uh mostly what we're looking at now is a lot of the branches from uh, a year ago, two years ago, have uh, a lot of foliage on them. But I'd like to see something start coming out of our trunk so that I could cut back some of these too thick branches we have going out. But so far, I don't see that happening. But what we are doing is we, uh, we are restoring some energy back to this tree and just kind of letting it go if it's doesn't give us just what we want. That's fine. Do what you want. Uh, make a lot of root mass and do all that other stuff. The uh, trident maple seems to be uh, seems to be doing pretty good. I think it's pretty happy with our cutback. All of this stuff is looking greener and fuller and healthier. And uh, the uh, wisteria Chinese wisteria sinensis. Uh, it's, I would say it's doing really well. It's got some new growth here and some uh, new growth here. It's like responding. Some little shoots are busting out. It's doing a little bit of a, a little bit of a response to its prune bag, but I believe that was necessary by cutting everything back. We cut everything back here to a usable height and, uh, we have some motion in this. That's good. I could bring that around a little too, probably. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the overall shape of that. Uh, I f yeah, yeah, I am. And I'm also happy with the way that uh, cutting that back brought everything, brought everything back to scale. Uh, leaving that cut there uh, is in case we have dieback, I, I intend to clean, clean that up and just let it just kind of just do one of those. So that's what's got us. That's what's got us there. Overall, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing on our balcony uh, as of uh, the first few days of June. And uh, it doesn't really feel like doesn't really feel like June 3rd. It feels, you know, just so cool out right now. 
I uh, watered late today, but also uh, some of the trees just didn't need it. They were still, uh, they were still moderately watered from yesterday, which yesterday everybody was was thirsty enough. But yeah, so we're just kind of cooling it here and enjoying enjoying this beautiful Friday. There's some kids out at the pool enjoying that. Um, so yeah. This is how our uh, cuttings turned out. This is round one batch of cuttings. One, it's also a batch of cuttings to be continued. We'll fill up the rest of that area with uh, with more as we see it. And then uh, as I answer questions to myself about which works better, we'll improve our method as we go. If it stays cool like this, I might keep my eye out and get or maybe get the hardware store to order a couple of heat mats. I was hoping I wouldn't need to keep plugging in uh, more stuff down here, but you know, I've got an outlet still open. Um, yeah, we're burning too light, but I've still got some room left, but I was kind of hoping I wouldn't need that. Uh, just less stuff is more, but if it stays cool like this, this could hinder this could be, that could be something that could hinder our ratio a little bit, but I still overall feel pretty good about it. But I was just like, I wouldn't even know. It turns into uh, 65 degrees in paradise about the time I start my cuttings. Anyway, that's a hell of a problem to have. Uh, looking at the, uh, looking at our California coastal oak. It is just putting on stuff right and left. It's probably time to give it a little bit of prune back so it will split off and give us some more ramification. We're just filling out nicely, nicely. There's our little hollow feature on that tree. It's got a really nice base and some really good bark. And uh, I just really think the world of that tree. I'll be glad when I get uh, when I get it filled out a little bit more over here, get a little bit more over there, and then we just keep going. Also, this tree has a nice little leaf hopper. I've seen him a couple of times. He's a, he's a happy little guy. I'm glad for him to hang out. Uh, when I put this tree on the bonsai bench uh, a month or so ago, the uh, spider was hanging out on the bench for most of the day. I kind of kept my eye on it, but I wasn't worried about it. I just wanted to make sure he got back on the tree before I put it out on the bench. I didn't want him to have to walk out. Know, that would be like walking across town uh, distance-wise for him. So yeah. Go, Japanese black pine, go. Go, cypress trees, go get your finger out of there. Anyway, that's our Friday drop. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Our next drop will be manana, our Saturday drop. Uh, goodness knows what uh, Frida and I will be up to on Super Saturday. But uh, I bet it'll be something. That's just, look at that. Flowers and bonsai trees and just all of that. All of that and Frida too. Thank you uh, so much for watching.